Jesus ever. Jesus ever Jesus all in all will see is a savior is a sanctifier to and healer Baptizer and the coming king. Jesus only is a Sanctify 
Shang help my own belief. Savior, 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 hear my humble cry while on others thou art calling do not pass me by trust him only in thy marriage would I seek thy face hear my wounded broken spirit save me by thy grace Savior, Savior 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 Savior, 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 yeah. my humble cry, everybody singing, my all, oh no, that's thou art called, you are calling to do not pass me. Everybody clapping, singing, Savior, Savior, my humble cry, while on others thou art called, only in do not pass me by. Pass me not to gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by, Savior. Savior, my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me. 
you by this morning in Jesus name why don't you raise your voice to the Lord and say oh Lord I come here this morning I come with a need I come with a problem I come with a challenge and I'm believing you this morning Lord you are the message you are the savior you are the sanctifier you are the healer you are the power. You are the coming king. And I come this morning believing that you will not pass me by. While on others you are calling, while others you are blessing, this morning will be my morning. Will be my time. My time of receiving mercy. Miracle of mercy. Not by marriage. I come for the mercy of the Lord. And I hope in God. He is my deliverer. He is my healer. He is my redeemer. He is the power on whom I depend. Trusting only in his merit. I want to receive from the Lord this morning on the basis of the mercy and the merit of the Lord. He'll be touching you, he'll be passing his miracle power upon your life. And you will discover in passing by, touching other people, touching you too, doing something great, something wonderful in your life. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forevermore. He has never failed, and He will not fail you today. You can trust Him. You can believe in Him. You can lean upon Him. You can trust Him. Rely upon Him. For He never, never, never fails. His love cannot fail. His power cannot fail. His purpose, His plan cannot fail. Trust Him. Believe Him. Rely upon Him. He's right there by your side. In His presence, the raised fullness of joy and he gives what he has promised in Jesus name we pray and everybody shout Heavenly Father we thank you for a glorious day like this a day of mercy a day of miracle, a day of signs and wonders, a day when the cross will cross out and cancel every negative thing in every life of everyone who believes. Lord, we come today with a great hope in God that those things who have been asking you, 
The sins we have been pleading and praying for. It is this day you will accomplish it in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray the wonder of the cross will come to every life this morning in Jesus' name. The wonder of your salvation. The wonder of your healing. The wonder of your miracle. And the wonder of your deliverance. And the wonder of the authority of the believer, the dominion of the believer. That wonder will come into every life this morning in Jesus' name. I pray, oh Lord, the devil will not overcome any child of God here. And in all the places we're listening to this word of God, oh Lord, we pray, you will crush the evil one. You will destroy the work of the evil one. And you set every captive free today in Jesus' name. We are praying, O oh Lord, that you receive the glory and the blessing will come upon the people of God today. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. We can sit down. We are looking at the word of God this morning on hope, happiness, and healing. If you are sick in your body, I want to tell you that Jesus is still the great physician and he is still the healer and he wants to touch you and heal you this morning whatever your condition may be there is no reason to lose hope because once you keep your hope positive alive you are going to find the happiness the joy of the Lord will be your strength and then the healing will flow readily into your life even this morning in Jesus name in Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 7 Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 7 blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord whose hope the Lord is when it appears there is no hope in any man there is no hope in the situation there is no hope in the conditions that surround you there is no hope in the things you feel you want to remember god is greater than what you see and god is greater than how you feel and god is greater than your thoughts and you can put that your hope not in your feeling you can put your hope not in your condition. You can put your hope not in your situation. You can put your hope in God. And your hope in God will bring blessings from on high upon your life in Jesus' name. And then he tells us in verse 14, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. He just said, My hope is in the Lord. And because my hope is in the Lord, I'm now telling the Lord, you look away from everything around you. And then you center your hope and focus your hope and pin your hope on the Lord Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. As we look at the message this morning, hope happiness and healing the message divides itself naturally into three parts number one the anchor of hope the anchor of hope number two the antidote of happiness antidote of happiness sorrow poisons our lives sadness poisons our lives grief poisons our lives thinking about negative things and feeling the pain and thinking about that poisons our lives it makes us to go down deep into the valley of depression despair and darkness but when your ship is drifting and it appears the waves of the ocean will swallow up your little boat the anchor that anchors you to the shore, the shore of deliverance, that 
anchor is the hope and the antidote that will erase and nullify and cancel all the poison in your mind, your spirit, that is happiness. The antidote of happiness. What the Lord injects into you. What the Lord imputes, imparts into your life. And then he says, if you want to have all the poison, all the negative thoughts you have been thinking about, that will destroy your life and make you sink under the ocean of all the problems. The antidote is the happiness. You make yourself happy in the Lord. You count your blessings and see the great things the Lord has done. And because of that, because of that joy, and because of that happiness, you can come up to the surface, and then you'll find the positive power of the Lord working in your life. Number three is the assurance of healing. That means there's no shadow of doubt. There can be no doubt in the mind of God that he will heal you. There can be no doubt in the mind of Christ that he will heal you. There can be no doubt as you look at the promises of God. The promises of God are not yes and no. The promises of God are not perhaps or maybe. The promises of God give us assurance and certainty, affirmation and confirmation. That this is what God has said, and God cannot deny himself the assurance of healing. I want to assure you this morning, your healing is coming your way. I said your healing is coming your way. You will see it in your body and feel it in your own mind, in your own soul. And when that power comes to touch you, when that hand of the Almighty touches you, you know it is time to get out of that sickness, out of that captivity. And this time, this morning, is the morning of your freedom in Jesus' name. Number one is the anchor of hope. The anchor of our hope. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6 and I'm reading there from verse 16 Hebrews chapter 6 verse 16 for men verily swear by the greater and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife it says when men in those days wanted to confirm any promise they gave what they will do is to swear one to another. And when the Almighty God gave a promise to Abraham, and he gave a promise to the sons and descendants of Abraham, the people that are walking by the faith of Abraham, they look at the promises of God and they see that God himself has committed himself so much and he said, this is my promise to you, it cannot fail. And the promise of God is greater than what you feel. The promise of God is greater than what you see. The promise of God is greater than what any man on earth can tell you. And that is on the place you put your hope, the anchor of hope. In verse 17, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability. That means the unchangeableness of his counsel confirmed it by an hope in verse 18 that by two immutable things unchangeable things immovable things in which it was impossible for god to lie can god lie i said can god lie if the Lord says, I will heal you, is that a lie? If the Lord says, I will deliver you, can that be a lie? Can the devil make God a liar? Can your feeling make God a liar? Can your medical doctor make God a liar? Tell me. Can the seriousness of your sickness make God a liar? No, nobody and nothing on earth, under the earth, 
above the earth can make God a liar. And here it says, by two immutable, unchangeable, immovable things, in the which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation. A strong consolation. When you concentrate on your feeling, you have a weak consolation. When you concentrate on how other people look at you and they pity you, you have a weak consolation. But when you change everything, when you turn around and you say, I don't look at what I see. And I'm not looking at what I feel. I'm looking at the Almighty God. That Almighty God that created the whole universe without anything. He created everything without nothing. That Almighty God that divided the Red Sea. That's who I'm looking at. That Almighty God that made the Jericho walls to fall down. That's the God I'm looking at. That, that Almighty God that gave Abraham, a child at the age of 100. That's the God I'm looking at. And if that's the God you're looking at this morning, you have a strong, strong consolation in Jesus' name. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold on the hope, on the hope, on the hope. Search before us which hope we have as an anchor. It is the hope we have that serves as an anchor. And all the waves of the ocean, all the storms of your situation, all the difficulties of the challenges you are facing, when you have that hope as your anchor, this morning you'll come out of that condition in Jesus' name. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure, and steadfast, which entereth into that within the veil. We're looking at Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 4. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Here it says in 15 verse 4 of Romans, For whatsoever things were written aforetime, whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning. That we, through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have what? Oh, what were the things reaching up for time? That you have read. That as you bring those things reaching up for time, you can compare it with your condition. You can compare it with your situation. And because those things that were reaching up for time were reaching for your learning. They were reaching for your admonition that you through the things you have read will apply to your life and then you will have hope. Can I remind you of some things that were reaching a full time? Here yeah, I've read about a woman that had issue of blood 12 years. And now she was growing worse and worse and worse. What do you understand by that? Worse and worse. That means the pain was increasing. That means that as you look at her stature and as you look at her physique, when somebody had been losing blood continuously for 12 years and then growing worse, obviously she will not be as fat as she was 12 years ago. But then will you see, you will see the odor and the smell all around her. And yet she heard of Jesus Christ. And when she heard of Jesus Christ, she came in the press and she said, If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And those things that were reaching her for time, they were reaching for your learning, for your admonition, that you through the comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You have hope this morning. I said you have hope this morning. That sickness might have been for 12 years or 10 years or 20 years. But this morning the Lord is coming your way. And he's going to take that sickness away in Jesus' name. You might have used all the medication you know how to use. You might have consulted all the doctors in the land. And then you are growing worse. I want to tell you this morning, the hope that is coming your way is that this morning, healing is coming your way in Jesus' name. It cannot fail because it says those things that were reaching a full time. 
they were reaching for our learning, for our admonition, for our instruction, that we, everyone, have been comfort now and patience of the scriptures, will be able to have hope. Do you remember the man that had a child? And this child, sometimes the evil spirit will come upon him. He'll throw him into the water to drown him. He'll throw him into the fire to burn him up and to kill him. And then he came to Jesus and said, other, other people have prayed. I brought him to your disciples and they prayed and prayed. Nothing happened. If you can do anything, have mercy on us and help us and deliver him. And Jesus said, like he's saying this morning, if thou canst believe. If you can believe this morning, I thank God you believe. I said, I thank God you believe. And I'm believing along with you and I'm believing that this morning is the morning of your deliverance. It is the morning of your healing. The strength of the Lord will come into your life. And when that strength comes, you will find the Lord has healed you in Jesus' name. If thou canst believe, say, I believe. Everybody, I believe. If thou canst believe, all things are possible for him that believeth. And it says that we, through the comfort and the patience of, of, of the scriptures, might have hope. You have hope this morning. I said you have hope this morning. Can I tell you something about hope? It's not good enough to hope for one minute and then the other minute you, you change gear and then you go into despair. It is not good to have hope one hour and then the next hour you change into the negative. The hope, the hope, the hope must be to the end. We're looking at First Peter chapter 1 verse 13. First Peter chapter 2. Chapter 1, verse 13, Wherefore, get up the loins of your mind. Wherefore, get up the loins of your mind. Why is Peter saying that? To get up the loins of your mind. Look up for a minute. You know, the mind is like a street. And thoughts will come like personalities loitering, loafing around. And these thoughts will come just wandering around. And these other thoughts will come loafing and loitering. Close the gate and drive out all those wandering thoughts, all those ones that are loitering and loafing in your mind and then telling you this stop all the discussion with those loitering wandering thoughts you know it's very dangerous you're in the street and you find people that are loitering going up and down for you to engage in conversation with those strangers what it says is get up the noise of your mind, all those negative thoughts coming in your mind, you drive them out and then you close the gate and any other thoughts you are going to entertain that will come to your heart will be thoughts of hope and the thoughts of the promises of God that will never fail and the thoughts of the fact that God is still on the throne. And because God is on the throne, he cannot fail, he will not fail. I said your God this morning will not fail you in Jesus' name. Wherefore, get up the loins of your mind and be sober and hope until when? Tell me out loud. Tell me out loud. To the end. Hope to the end. That's always a secret. The secret of the anchor of hope. That you hope not just for today. Not just for one week. You hope, you say, I've been hoping. I thought God will kill me. But now look at my condition. Hope to the end. Do you remember the children, the disciples of Jesus Christ on the stormy sea? And then as they were on the stormy sea, they were moving, let us go on and pass on to the other side. And I'm telling you, we're going on to the other side. 
I said, we're going on to the other side. And then while they were going on, there was storm, then there was water coming into the boat. Now remember, Jesus is in the boat. And while Jesus is in the boat, you cannot sink. I said, you cannot sink. I don't care about the origin of that storm. I don't care the direction of that storm. I don't care how many devils and demons and people and personalities are behind that, uh, that storm. While Jesus is still in the boat, you will not sink. You cannot sink in Jesus' name. And then they came to Jesus and woke him up and said, Lord, we perish, don't you care? Of course he cares, he cares. The point is keep on hoping and keep on hoping and you hope to the very end and sh this problem this morning will be removed in Jesus' name. This is your problem, this is your calamity, this is your pain, this is your situation. Everything will turn around and change this morning in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 18. Romans chapter 4, reading from verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope. You see that? Against hope. That means when, humanly speaking, the situation was hopeless. When, scientifically speaking, the situation was hopeless. When, historically speaking, the situation was hopeless. That means when you look at the situation and you look at history, you see, there is no other case in history equal to this case. And yet when it appears, there is nothing to give you hope in history. Hope will come from heaven. I said hope will come from heaven. That's why Abraham had to look away from everything historical, everything scientific, everything human. And then hope, who against hope, believe in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be and being not weak in faith he considered not what again tell me out loud he considered not his own body hey look up here Abraham, why didn't you consider your body? Oh, he said, I have two voices speaking to me. The God of heaven is speaking to me. And my body is speaking to me. And they're saying different things. And what God says is greater than what my body is saying. After all, God had been there before my body ever existed. And God's voice will be the higher voice and the greater voice and the more mighty, powerful voice. That's why he didn't listen to his body. Listen to God. Every situation will change this morning in Jesus' name. He considered not his own body. Then it says, now dead. When he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Can you see double deadness there? Is somebody now dead? And in the deadness of Sarah's, of Sarah's womb, too. And to be able to have children, you know, Abraham had to be active and alive. And then Sarah, too, had to be active and alive. And yet it says, number one, the deadness of Abraham's body. Number two, the deadness of Sarah's womb. And when you have that double deadness, and yet Abraham will not consider that. And it is because he knew the voice of God and the promise of God is greater. Greater than anything you feel and greater than anything you see. And I believe this morning, as you consider the word of God, and as you consider the might of God, and as you consider the hope you have in Christ as an anchor, 
this morning you will not fail and God will not fail in Jesus name and that's why those people had hope that's why Abraham had hope that's why Sarah also had hope because they knew the voice of God the promise of God the pronouncement of God is greater and higher and heavier and weightier than anything you feel in the body, anything you see. And this morning, the great God, the mighty God, the never failing God will walk in your life in Jesus' name. Oh, you will do what Abraham did if you are walking in the faith, in the steps of the faith of Abraham. And you are saying, oh yes, Lord, I know. If you did it for Abraham, you will do it for all the people that are walking out of the footsteps of faith of Abraham. And this morning, it will be your turn in Jesus' name. Wait a minute. Do you remember that before Abraham, nobody manifested that kind of faith? He didn't have any antecedent. Anyone they can look to and they can say, because so and so believe God like that, because so and so believe God like that, I too can. But we have such a great privilege. We can refer to what Abraham did and we can refer to how he believed God. We can refer to how Joshua believed God. We can refer to how David believed God. We can refer to how the prophets of old and the patriarchs of old, how they believed God. We have antecedents. We have the people that have gone before us. If they went before us and they believed the Lord, we too can believe the Lord. And this morning you are believing the Lord and all the problems, everything will roll away in Jesus' name. In verse 20 it says, he staggered not. It's the strong people that get staggered. And you know, ideas of the world will make you drunk. You'll be staggering. Opinions of the world will make you drunk. You'll be staggering. But when you say yes, I'm holding my anchor, my faith upon the word of God, you will not stagger. You will be stable. You'll be steady. And you'll be solid on the word of God and say, this is what he has said because this is what he has said you will overcome i said you will overcome and remember you are hoping unto the end you're not just hoping for a moment and hoping for a day and hoping for two days and hoping for one week you hope to the very end and as you hope and you're hoping to the very end that thing you are hoping for it will come your way in jesus name he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded. How was he persuaded? I said, How was he persuaded? He was fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. He will do it in Jesus' name. Give me a good, good. Amen. Amen. Number two, the antidote of happiness. Antidote of happiness. You know what? Bad news poisons the mind and poisons your system. You know what? Pain and feeling poisons your system. It makes you to think in the negative direction. You know what? Recapturing and rethinking. Hope in your mind, all this happened to so and so, that happened to so and so. Telling yourself the history of the people that got down the drain. It will poison your system with sadness and sorrow. And as the sorrow increases, as the sadness increases, the sickness increases. But when you turn around and you say, is there anything I can praise God for? Is there anything I can be joyful about? Is there anything I can be happy about? That happiness will bring joy to your life. And that joy will be the strength of your heart. And the strength of your life. That's why the Lord is telling us this morning we need to be happy in the Lord. And whatever condition where you are, whatever is happening to you now, you can say, yes, I praise the Lord, I praise the Lord. There's something to be thankful for. And as you have that thankfulness and joyfulness and happiness, then you will find it is an antidote to all the poisonous things that come into your system. This morning, the joy of the Lord will be your strength in Jesus' name. 
in Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 10. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them, for whom nothing is prepared. For this is this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry. Neither be ye what? Tell me out loud. Neither be ye sorrowful. Don't think about things that will bring tears in your eyes. Wipe those tears away. Don't give up on your hope. Wipe those tears away. Don't entertain any thought that will bring sorrow and sadness, gloominess, despair, depression. Wipe them all away. And it says, neither be ye sorry. Why? For the joy of the Lord is what? It's your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. When you make your heart happy, your heart merry, your heart joyful, your heart bubbling with the joy of the Lord because you know God is on your side. You are a child of God. That's something to be happy about. And God says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That is something to be joyful about. And the Lord says, I'm giving you a promise. And this promise I'm giving you is as strong as myself. That's something to be happy and joyful about. Wipe away those tears and neither be sorry because the joy of the Lord, that is your stress. Then he tells us in Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs chapter 17 rather. Proverbs chapter 17. I'm reading verse 22. A merry heart does good like a medicine. A merry heart, a happy heart, a joyful heart, a bubbling heart doeth good like medicine. The Lord is saying to you today, find something to be happy about. Find something to be joyful about. Find something to celebrate. And while you are celebrating and singing the song of Zion, I believe this morning, everything that is negative will clear out of your life in Jesus' name. You know, I remember one man in Bible days, and if anybody had a reason to be sorrowful, that man had a reason to be sorrowful. His name is Joseph. God gave him a dream. That's enough to give you joy. But then all his brothers hated him. Oh, you said, there's still something to be joyful about. My father loves me. Think about that. Joseph said, my father is greater than them all. And therefore all those my brethren that group together and team together and they hate me, that's nothing to think about. My father loves me. I'm happy. And then they sold him to slavery. And somebody said, are you still happy? Are you still joyful? Because now they sold you to slavery. But he said, I'm happy. Why are you happy? I'm happy they didn't kill me. They wanted to kill me. They said, here comes the dreamer. Let us kill him and see what will become of his dream. I'm happy they only sold me. It could be more serious than this, but I'm still alive. And then he got into Potiphar's house. And the wife of Potiphar said, now you must commit sin. He said, no, people like us don't do that. Have a dream. Dreamers don't go in that direction. And then because of that, this woman told a lie against him and they put him in the prison. And I'm saying, Joseph, now you must be sad. He said, no, I'm not sad. Why are you not sad? Number one, God is with me. The presence of God. That's enough to give you joy. There is always a bright side in every situation you can look at and find something to be happy about because a merry heart, a joyful heart, a happy heart, do it good like a medicine. 
and then now but they put you in the prison and she and she unhappy about it said no but look at the kind of prison they put me they put me in the prison of dignitaries not in the prison of common people and she happy that she know god so directed it and then they put me in the best prison in the nation it's always something to be happy about and now some people were sad there and he looked at them and said why are you sad why are you unhappy they said what dreams and there's nobody to interpret oh he said i'm happy to tell you that i am an interpreter i can interpret it for you and then after the interpretation he said remember me when you're delivered and you go back to pharaoh's palace and the man forgot him joseph are you not unhappy are you not sad because the man forgot you he said no i'm not un i'm not sad i'm not unhappy why because he remembered me only at the right time. I don't ever want anybody to remember me at the wrong time. He remembered me at the time Pharaoh had a dream for me to interpret. What am I telling you? If you look at the situation of Joseph, you will see that man must be sorrowful and sad. No! Count your blessing and see what the Lord has done. There is something to be happy about. And if you make yourself happy, then you will find that in that condition, the seed of the promise of God will be able to grow. And will bring forth fruit in your life, a fruit of miracle, a fruit of healing, a fruit of deliverance, a fruit of dominion. And you are going to have that this morning in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter chapter 15 verse 13 Proverbs chapter 15 verse 13 here it says in verse 13 a merry heart a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance what you have on the heart the joy the cheerfulness that you have on the heart will change everything around you'll be happy I said you'll be happy we're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 25 onwards. Deuteronomy chapter 33, and I'm reading from verse 25 onwards. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 25, here is what it says. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. I thought somebody would say, Amen. As thy days, as thy days, so shall be your weakness. What is it? As thy days, so shall thy strength be. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in the hell, and in his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. That's enough to make you shout for joy. That's enough to make you celebrate that whatever your condition, underneath you this morning are those everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee and shall say, destroy them. Your enemies will not laugh in your condition. Your enemies are going to be confounded and ashamed in Jesus' name. Israel shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also, his heavens shall drop down dew. Happy art thou. This morning, happy art thou. Who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord, the shield of thy hell? And who is the sword of thy excellency? Thine enemy shall be found liars unto thee. Keep that joy. Keep that celebration. And keep that happiness. Just a few moments from now, your enemies will be found liars unto thee. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. Acts of the Apostles chapter 16. Acts chapter 16 and i'm reading there from verse 22 acts chapter 16 reading from verse 22 be joyful be happy and let this happiness be the antidote that will kind of nullify neutralize 
every poison of negative thoughts, sorrow and sadness, depression, grief in your heart. It says in this chapter 16 of Acts, verse 22, and the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrates rent up their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. That's talking about Paul and Silas. And you know, if you want to be sad, there's always something to be sad about. If you want to be sorrowful, there's always something to consider and be sorrowful. If you want to entertain grief, if you're looking for tears and you want to drink your tears, there's always something to think about that will make you shed tears profusely. And Paul and Silas, if they wanted to be sorrowful, there was something they could have been sorrowful about. All these people that they had blessed, all these people that they had healed, all these people that they had ministered the gospel of life to, they came against them. They put their lives in their hands and see, they just wanted to be a blessing to the people. Eventually they said, no, we don't want that. We don't want what we're giving. And then they conspired against them until they threw them into the prison after beating them mercilessly. If you want to be sorrowful, you can be sorrowful on that. But Paul and Silas had something to be joyful about. If they found something in their heart and something in their situation to be joyful about, this morning you can find something to be happy about and that happiness will neutralize every negative thing in your life in Jesus' name. Don't look at the people that appear to be against you. Look at the Almighty God that is on your side. And if you look at the Almighty God on your side, God is greater than all. And because God is greater than all, and that God is on your side, you can be happy. And this time, this morning, you'll sing the song of joy in Jesus' name. It is that celebration. It is that happiness. It is that joy that brings miracle rushing from heaven and that miracle will rush upon your life this morning in Jesus' name. If you cannot pray, sing. If you cannot sing, just smile. And just think about happy thoughts and keep on whispering to the Lord in the ears of the Lord. I'm happy I'm a Christian. I'm happy I'm a child of God. I'm happy you are greater than my circumstance. I'm happy you are greater than my situation. I'm happy you're on my side. I'm happy that salvation, eternal life inside here. I'm happy Jesus Christ is praying for me. I'm happy Jesus Christ on the right hand side of God is making intercession for me. I'm happy because I have the Bible. I'm happy because I'm not like unbelievers that have no hope. I'm happy because I'm in Christ and in Christ have everything purchased and given unto me. You have something to be happy about and that happiness will bring miracle into your life this morning in Jesus name. And then it was 25 and at midnight, at midnight, at midnight. You know, that, that's the time if you are awake at midnight. That's when people normally have sorrow. Everything is dead and still. Everything is dark and dreary. And then all those thoughts, the loitering, wandering thoughts will be coming now. If you don't lock the door against them at midnight, when there's nobody talking to you, that's when your mind is recalling all the things that should make a man, a woman sorrowful. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang, praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. They didn't care about those prisoners. Whether their singing will wake them up or not. They didn't care whether their joy will disturb anybody or not. They just sang praises unto the Lord. And the prisoners had them on verse 26. And tell me the word. And tell me the word. And tell me the word. Suddenly, it's in the midst of your singing. It's in the midst of your happiness. It's in the midst of your celebration. It's in the midst of your joy. That miracle will come suddenly. That healing will come suddenly. That deliverance will come suddenly. The opening of the prison doors will come suddenly. It's coming this morning. 
I said it's coming this morning and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking. The foundation of your prison this morning was shake. The very root of your calamity this morning was shake. And everything that is standing like a tower, terrifying you, the very foundation of that thing will shake this morning in Jesus' name. The foundation of the prison was shaking, and then it says immediately, all the doors were open. There is a breakthrough this morning. And everyone's bands were loose. All your bands are loose this morning. Point number one, the anchor of hope. Point number two, the antidote of happiness. Point number three, the assurance of what? Tell me out loud. The assurance of healing. How do you have assurance? If somebody tells you, I will do this. And you know he's not lying. And you know he's very sincere. And you know he means what he says. And he said exactly what he meant. And he said, I will. Can I tell you this morning, God means what he says. Can I have an amen for that? And God has said only what he meant. Any amen for that? And God said, I will. God said, I will. God said, I will. Can I show you Second Kings chapter 20? Second Kings chapter 20. When God says, I will, I will, I will, that settles it. Second Kings chapter 20 verse 5. I want you to be searching for those words, I will. Second Kings chapter 20 verse 5. Turn again and tell Ezekiel the captain of my people. Thus says the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, 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 I will heal thee. That settles it. I said that settles it. On a third day, that shall go up unto the house of the Lord. And I, what? I will add unto thy days fifteen years. That's all right. Fifteen years is not bad. When Isaiah said, set your house in order, for you will surely die. Fifteen years, that's not bad. When the doctor had said, you have only a few days to leave. 15 years, that's not bad. When your neighbors have looked at you and said, you don't have a long time to leave. 15 years, that's much, that's enough. I will add 15 years unto thee. When he said, I will, nobody can reverse that. God said he will, and he will do it. I said he will do it. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 18. We're searching for those glorious words, I will. Isaiah 57, verse 18. I've seen his ways, and what? Will heal him. I will heal him. I've seen his ways, and I will heal him. I will lead him also, and restore comforts unto him, and to his mourners. I that's verse 18 now, verse 17. For the iniquity of his covetousness was I love. In verse 17. And then he tells us in verse 19 now, I create the fruit of the leaves. Peace, peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, says the Lord. And uh, tell me the rest. Tell me the rest. Say that confidently. Say that with assurance. I will heal him. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. For I will restore health unto him. And what? 
Tell me out loud. And I will heal thee of thy wounds, says the Lord. I will heal. I will heal him of the wounds. How many times do you want God to tell you? In Second Kings chapter 20, I will. In Isaiah 57, verse 13, verse 19, I will. In Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17, I will. For I will restore health unto thee. And I will heal thee of thy wounds, says the Lord. Because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. We're looking at chapter 33 of Jeremiah, verse 6. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 6. I will, I will. Behold, I will bring each health. I will bring each health and kill. I will kill them. I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. The Lord says this morning, He will, and nothing will stop Him. Matthew chapter 8, verse 7. Matthew chapter 8. We're reading from verse 7. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 7. And Jesus says unto him, I will come and uh, heal him. He's coming to you. I said he's coming to you. Mark chapter 1, Mark chapter 1, Mark chapter 1, verse 41, verse 42. And Jesus moved with compassion. In verse 41, put forth a son and touched him and says unto him, I will be thou clean. You see that? I will be thou clean. It was 42, and as soon as he had spoken, immediately, immediately, the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 13. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. We're looking at verse 13. I will, I will, I will. Chapter 43, verse 13. Yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work. I know shall let it. Who shall hinder it? God comes to you this morning with that pronouncement. And he says in your life this morning, I will. And Satan cannot change that. And your feeling cannot change that. And all the people in the world, all joined together, cannot change that. This morning, God's I will is injected into your life. And that willingness of God, with the divine ability of the Almighty, will get you out of that situation this morning. And you are going to have everything the Lord has promised you in Jesus' name. Number one, this morning you have the anchor of hope. Number two, you have the antidote of happiness. And number three, praise the Lord. You have the affirmation, confirmation, and the assurance of healing. Are you ready this morning? I said, are you ready this morning? Why don't you stand up and tell the Lord, I'm hopeful now, I'm hopeful now, I'm hopeful now, I'm hopeful now. I'm not looking at what I see. I'm not looking at what I feel. I'm not looking at what is going on around me. I'm looking at the Almighty God and Almighty God have this hope as an anchor. This hope as an anchor. And it's going to see you through this morning. This is the morning of your breakthrough, the morning of your miracle, the morning of your healing, the morning of your deliverance. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Have hope in God. Have hope in God. Have hope in God. Talk to the Lord in prayer. The anchor of hope is that anchor that will not allow your sheep to, to stray, to drift. It is that hope. It is that hope that is an anchor for you this morning. And you're saying, oh Lord, yes, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Hope in God. Hope in God. Hope against hope. When the situation appears humanly hopeless, historically hopeless, scientifically hopeless, that you're hoping in God, nothing negative, everything positive.
Get up the loins of your mind. Chase out all those loitering, wandering, loafing thoughts. Lock the door against all those loafing, loitering, wandering thoughts. Welcome in the promise of God. Welcome in the presence of the Lord. Welcome in the positive assurance of the Lord that gives you hope. Hope in the Lord. Yes, I hope in the Lord. My hope is in you, O Lord. My hope is in you, O Lord. My hope is in you, O Lord. Satan is not your friend. Don't accept his thoughts. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Don't befriend him. Don't entertain his thoughts. And the enemies of faith, the enemies of the gospel, who might say anything to you, as if they're telling you it is hopeless. Anyone talking about hopelessness? When God is on the throne, that's the enemy of faith. Don't entertain their words, their look, their thoughts, their ideas, or their proclamation. Guard up the loins of your mind. Hope in God. Hope in God. Hope in God. That hope will be your anchor. Can you rejoice? Can you find something to rejoice about? That you are a child of God by grace, by faith. That's enough to make you celebrate. The knowledge you have of the promise of God. Other people in your situation are ignorant and hopeless. You are instructed and hopeful. That's something to celebrate. You belong to people that have faith. You are surrounded with people of faith and people of fellowship. That's enough to make you celebrate. And the voice of Jesus coming to you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And the Lord is telling you over and over, fear not, fear not. I am with you. I will get you out of this situation. That's enough to make you celebrate. Count in your blessings. See what the Lord has done. He has preserved your life. He has saved you. He has had mercy on you. And look at all the blessings he surrounds with. That's enough to make you celebrate. He gives you understanding in his word. And the word of his promise is coming to you. You are not an orphan. You are not a fatherless, motherless individual. The word of God is sustaining you and supporting you. The spirit of the living God is dwelling within you. And in the spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead, dwelling in your mortal body, he that raised him from the dead will also quicken your mortal body to make you alive. That's enough to make you celebrate. And the Lord Jesus Christ on the throne is praying for you. Is interceding for you. That's enough to make you celebrate. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. A merry heart, a joyful heart, a happy heart. Think about what makes you happy. Drive all those tears away. All those negative thoughts, drive them away. And be happy in the Lord. Be joyful in the Lord. Happy, happy, joyful. A tone of celebration. A tone of celebration. A song of joy. God is on your side. God is on your side. God is on your side. Isn't that something to make you happy? Something to celebrate? He said, I will never leave you. 
I will never forsake you. So I may boldly say, the Lord is my strength. Of what shall I be afraid? Of whom shall I be afraid? In order to make you celebrate. Other people have gone this way before. And they called upon the Lord and the Lord answered them. And we're told in the scriptures, the Lord is no respect of persons. And if the Lord is no respect of persons, that's enough to make you joyful, happy, celebrate. It's in the midst of that celebration. It's in the midst of that joy. It's in the midst of that singing that suddenly all the very foundation of your prison of your prison will be shaking. And all those doors are going to be open. And then God brings a breakthrough in your life. The hope and the happiness and the healing. Yes, they come. The happiness follows the hope. And the healing follows the happiness. It cannot change. It will not change. It's a great I am that I am. Is the one who has decided to heal you, to bless you, and to deliver you, to destroy all the works and the plans of the enemy. Today is the day of your rejoicing. Today is the day of your hope and the happiness and the healing. Celebrate! And you remember what the Lord has said. He said, I will. I will heal you. Hold on to that. Accept that. Believe that. Stand on that. That's the infallible, unchangeable, immovable word of God. I will heal you. And I will add 15 years unto thy days. Accept that there is assurance this morning. He cannot lie. He cannot lie. And your feelings are not stronger than God. And your situation is not stronger than the Almighty. And whatever your mind is telling you cannot be stronger. Than the proclamation of the Almighty God, I will heal him. The Lord says, I will. The Lord says, I will. That should build your confidence. I will. I will. I will. And who can hinder that? And who can stop that? And who can contradict that? I will. The Almighty comes to you this morning. And the Almighty says he will. That builds up your hope. That strengthens your hope. That energizes your inner man. He says, I will. It's coming your way. He says, I will work. And you shall let it. I will heal. And you can hinder that. I will deliver. And you can reverse that. Rejoice in that assurance. Rejoice in that confidence. Rejoice in that thought. Rejoice in that affirmation and confirmation. He will. This morning, it will come your way. It will come to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Anybody there having hope as on your anchor this morning, in Jesus' name we pray. Anybody there believing that nobody can conquer God, 
Nobody can reverse the promises of God. Anybody there this morning knowing that God cannot lie. And God said, He will heal you, He will deliver you, He will destroy the works of the devil, and He will chase away the enemy and all the plans of the enemy. He will reverse in your life. Anybody there in Jesus' name we pray. Do you have anybody there wiping away the tears? There's no reason to weep. There's anybody there that is cleaning their eyes and he says, Now I'll be crying, I cry no more. I'll be weeping, I weep no more. Because this day is the day of celebration. This day is the day of rejoicing. This day is the day of looking up to heaven and singing. Anybody there that says, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will rejoice in the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Anybody having assurance there today? Anybody having assurance there today? Assurance within your soul. Assurance within your heart that God said, I will. God said, I will. And because God said, I will, nobody can reverse it. Your enemies cannot reverse it. Even yourself, your mind cannot reverse it. All the world joined together will not be able to reverse the almighty statement that says, I will, I will, I will. It is done this morning. I said it is done this morning. If you believe that, rejoice and clap your hands even before we pray. Celebrate before we pray. Show your joy before we pray. Accept what God has said and let the joy of the Lord be your strength even before we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. You are blessed already. You are healed already. You are delivered already. The very foundation of your captivity and prison is shaking already. In Jesus' name. Now you raise up your hand, there is no shadow of doubt in your heart that you are that favored one, the blessing of God coming upon your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning because your promises give us hope. Your statements give us hope. Your character give us hope. What you have done in the past gives us hope. And the assurance to give us this morning, give us hope. Oh Lord, we pray this hope will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. Lord, we want to tell you that as we look at the promises, as we look at your faithfulness, the celebration singing joy in our hearts this morning. Oh Lord, we pray, do what you have said in Jesus' name. You said you will heal. You said you will heal. It doesn't matter the nature of the sickness or the description of the sickness. We come this morning to accept that healing. We come this morning to receive that healing. We come this morning to experience that healing. Oh Lord, I pray you stretch out your healing hand right now and heal all your people in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you deliver the oppressed. You destroy the works of the devil. Where there is pain, take the pain away. Any infirmity, take the infirmity away. Any weakness, take the weakness away. And where medical science and where people have said, this is the end. Lord, I say, this is the beginning. This is the beginning of new things happening. The beginning of a new journey. The beginning of a new race. And Lord, I pray the healing, the miracle will come right now to everyone in Jesus' name. Confirm that in every life right now, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. We know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Finally, now everybody said, You have got it. I said you have got it. God has done it and nobody can reverse it in Jesus' name. 
If you check up yourself, you'll find the miracle is there already.